You can see here that I've got the N54 oil pan here mocked up, basically just placed uh, on top of the, the subframe. The reason that I am going to go N54 oil pan, and yes, I had the idea of using the M50 S50 oil pan and making it a, a, an adapter bracket here. The reason that I'm not doing that is one major reason. I could definitely make an adapter bracket that would allow um, a direct bolt on. That wouldn't be a problem. I can always supplement the offset with some subframe bushings and pull the subframe down about 20 millimeters in order to offset that difference. The problem is, is that the power steering pump will no longer be bolt on. There need to be some provisions installed, weldments that need to be made in order to install the power steering pump to the actual oil pan on the uh, on the other M50 block, it actually, the installation is on the block and a bracket that adapts to the block. Here, it's actually just the oil pan. So we would lose the power steering function. So that basically defeats the entire purpose of this being a bolt-on. So I'm sorry, guys. I do not have a bolt-on solution. So what I am going to do is I'm going to make as modular of a solution as possible for modifying the E30 subframe to allow the N54 oil pan to sit. Now, the benefits to using the N54 oil pan are clearly that you have a rear sump. And that is important because in, in under hard acceleration, all that oil is going to slosh to the back. And that's important to, to have all the oil sloshing to the back, back where the pickup is actually located because you know you're never going to star, starve the oil, the engine of oil again, which is really important for anybody looking to swap an engine, especially if you're going to be using it in a high performance track situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up cutting the subframe. We're going to be welding in gussets. We're going to be removing and relocating the steering rack slightly different location in order to make everything fit. We're going to be using an E36 M3 front mount sway bar, and we're going to be installing them onto the strut housings um, because we are going to be going with different strut housings as well on the suspension. So all this stuff needs to kind of play together. We're not going to do it all in this episode, but we are going to be doing a lot of the subframe modifications as well as a removable core support. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a removable core support. We're gonna cut it here, we're gonna cut it down here, and over here, and up here, and we're gonna make it boltable. My monologue here is gone long enough, let's get started. Now it's time to make the E30 core support removable. How are we gonna do that? Well, like I said earlier, I wanna sawzall this part right here. I want to take this angle iron, this is one and a quarter inch angle iron, I want to butt it up right against there, I want to weld it to the bottom part, and then have the top part be removable. That way this thing can kind of sit right in this cradle, a couple through bolts, we're done. Now, on the outsides, I want to drill out the spot welds, I want to put some rivet nuts in there, I want to be able to make it easily boltable from underneath and on top. That'll really get me in a good spot here to make this thing removable, that way we can take the N54 and put it in and out with ease. I can paint this thing separately, paint the whole engine bay. Um, it'll also really make this, uh, once it's removed, um, it'll really make it easy to, uh, to work on the accessories and fit everything in um, because I don't have to worry about working around removing the N54 engine. So this is gonna be a good thing. I think this is gonna work out really well and I hope that you enjoy um, the process that I use in order to get through this.
right, so we just did a lot just now. Let's recap. We installed our angle iron on welded to the body side, not the sub, not the core support side. We welded it down here, and then I'll just uh, demonstrate with one side here. And then I drilled a hole 17, 7 16 actually this is 3 8 here, and I plan on using rivet, a, a rivet nut on the back side of this, and I'm gonna crimp it on, and then this will just be one bolt that goes through, but it, it clamps onto the rivet nut that's on the sheet metal back here. This guy is a through bolt. It's gonna go all the way through, and it, it goes onto this welded nut on the other side. Now it's important to do the lowers together and then do the uppers together because while we're doing the lowers, everything is still set in place as if it's factory, including up here. However, when we then start modifying this, we need to bolt this up and make sure that this is completely in the factory spot. Uh, that way, when we, when we unbolt everything and rebolt everything back together, everything's gonna fit perfectly and that's exactly what we want here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on this side here, and we're gonna replicate that effort for the other side. Um, we do not need to remove the fenders, which is a good thing, although it's, it's not ideal to keep it you know, like that and, and push up against it, but um, we're actually gonna be doing a lot of our drilling from underneath here. All right, all of our drilling is gonna be here. We got two spot welds there, we got a couple there. Um, we have a couple over here, one, two, three. So we are going to be doing some drilling out the spot welds, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're gonna get this part boltable as well. So let's start that now. Okay, now to find spot welds, basically a spot weld is basically a, like a laser, uh, uh, two nodes basically touching on either side of two uh, pieces of sheet metal. And it, over, it superheats them and it basically welds them together. It's called a spot weld. And you need to drill these welds out. And in order to drill them out, there's a special spot weld driller, right? And this guy here is like a little spring-loaded pin, right? And then the uh, the outside circumference is like a mini hole saw that basically gets it right through the center and then drills out and kind of um, expands the metal uh, so that, and it gets just the, the weld part remains and you can just grind that weld off later. I'll show you how to do that. But to find the welds is kind of tricky. Uh, you know, for the most part you can probably feel them, but there is a technique. Um, you can basically rub over them, kind of like guide coat, right? And your hands are dirty, so you kind of rub over them, and you can kind of see where they're kind of getting revealed there. Another uh, opportunity to find them is to use a flashlight, right? Well, I don't know. There we go. And you can kind of just lay the flashlight over it, and you can see that, you know, the raised surface kind of creates the shadow, right? You can see it, there's a, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to see all the spot welds. Let me do it down here too. You can see it. There's probably about four there that I need to be looked at. Um, let's just rub my finger down across it here. Expose them a little bit easier. Yeah, maybe you can see. Maybe it makes it a little bit easier. But um, yes, yeah, so we have to drill out a, a couple of them out here, a couple here, one here, and then there's two right there. Right. So you do that, and then this whole thing just kind of separates. And uh, and and it's pretty easy to mark where it was. You know, you can kind of see the marks, the holes. Um, and you can easily fit this back exactly the way it should go. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, we'll start with the easy one first. We gotta drill a pilot hole first so that this won't walk on us. That's what this little pin is for, is that the pin goes into the hole that you just drilled and it just basically drills right through. So you gotta basically drill your, your pilot hole first. Okay. Now that can sit in there. Okay. And now you don't want to go all the way through the metal. You want to just basically pierce the top layer and then it'll peel out. Here we go. Now you can see, don't have to lift much, the spot weld has been removed. Very, very easy, we just need to do it to all the others now.
All right, now that all the spot welds have been drilled out and it was actually relatively easy to do it, you can see that the whole part just now moves. Now what we can do is we can drill some holes, we can separate, we can put rivet nuts, we can put weld nuts on the backside. We can do a whole ton of stuff now in order to, to seal this exactly the, the, the position that we want it to be in. Now, but before we can do that, we need to do the other side as well, and that way we can take the entire core support out and start figuring out how we want to affix this end since we already have the lower ones completely done. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so remember earlier when I said that I was going to drill these, but I needed to widen them in order to make room for the rivet nuts, because on the back side of this is where we're gonna put our through bolt. This is our through bolt, and it's gonna end up coming through. The bracket that we welded on the lower side, and it's gonna go through and it's gonna screw right into here. But we need to make a 7 16 hole, and we need to put this rivet nut in there, and it's gonna clamp on the back side when you uh, use this <clears throat> Astro 1427 tool. Um, they are not sponsored, but I do like them a lot. They are a really, really good tool. But I will show you really quick how to do that. Let's first drill it out with 7 16 Now you put your rivet nut in there. Well, actually, you don't put the rivet nut in first. You actually just you screw it onto this. So it's just peeking through. And then you put this on, clamp it on the back side. <clears throat> now, unscrew. And now, that's a good clamp. Now, we have a place to screw in. This is really, really handy. We're gonna use uh, at least two of them on the outskirts as well. Um, but remember on these centers, we also have a through bolt going through, so it's gonna be really strong here, and everything's gonna line up perfectly. Okay, guys, here is the plan. I got five through bolts with nuts. I'm going to end up welding all these nuts on the back side so that this is basically just completely boltable and can be removed in a heartbeat. The five locations I'm gonna be using are up here, one over here, one over here, and then two right here, underneath, okay? I'm not gonna reuse any of these because this and this is gonna butt it up just fine and not like it's any structural rigidity, but the fender will be overlaying it and I could use another uh, bolt there. So this with the five bolts that I have here is gonna hold this in place, no problem. So let's go ahead and start drilling and welding the nuts and screwing it on, cutting the, cutting the, the bolts off that are too long and making this thing perfect. Not without a little bit of trouble, but I got the first one in. This was actually pretty tough um, because I was welding sheet metal and I ended up going through and actually sticking to the fender, but that's okay. This is all repairable. I already repaired down here uh, off camera. I should have probably done it on camera, but that's okay. Um, the next ones will definitely be repaired on camera and there will be more. So um, this guy actually fits pretty well. And now I'm going to end up putting the core support on and install it. And I'm going to get two down here. I'm gonna get two up here and or two down here, one here, and then one on the side there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's do that quick. Quick. Yeah, all right. These five are done. One, two, three, four, five. 
Weld nuts are done. I wanna weld more on the back, but I wanna take the fender off. I'm gonna do that later when we do more body work. So, and then same thing is gonna go over here. So we'll, we gotta do both sides. But I did get the, the, the holes positioned on that side. I'm gonna actually do the same thing for this side. And then we're going to uh, get everything installed and see how everything fits. We got our core support, we got our bolts and our hardware for both the, sh the, 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 the lower ends and also the sides. Let's get this thing bolted up and just see what it can do, huh? So the core support is completely installed at this point. I have the lower supports installed, I have the upper supports installed, all the bolt holes and weld nuts line up pretty good. I'm actually pretty impressed. When I take the fenders off and I start really detailing the engine bay, I'm gonna start shaving and re-welding and fine tuning all that, but it's not gonna change the overall shape. I wanted to just get this thing removable so I can start working on, that's right, the next thing. The pads, and I wanna work on the uh, motor mount. I want to get this N54 in in the next episode. So as we stand right here, we're doing really good. I think that I'm, I think that I have a very good core support. It's not budging. It's not budging. I just pulled my back. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the pads for the N54. Let's talk about the pads. Now, as you can see here, we are planning on using those three mounting locations underneath the turbos. That is going to give us some really good clearance in order to hit the E30 subframe. So we're gonna hit those three, make a plate there. That's gonna clear the, uh, the, the, the downpipes. 